Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday, April 8th. This will be our chart lesson for the day. And quick look at the daily chart. You can see we had an inside day today, kind of a small doji. We closed higher. We didn't trade higher than we did on the previous day, but we did close higher. Um, it was mostly a range day, and we kind of closed right in the middle of the range. Uh, according to this, it looks like the upper half, but... Um, Looking at the 2000 tick chart, it looks like we closed really closer to the middle of the range. So uh, anyway, not much happened today. There's, you had to be patient too this morning. There weren't any early trades. The afternoon, there, was, there were a few setups. We'll talk about them momentarily. But uh, there it is. I uh, thought we might trigger a second entry on this uh, bigger chart today, but we didn't. We had an inside day. So we'll see where we're going to go from here. Uh, generally, we've rallied strong by now, strongly by now, and this time we haven't done it yet. Doesn't mean we're not going to rally some more, but uh, uh, you can see this thing looks like it's trying to turn over a little bit up here. So we may be topping out. I, I, it's just hard to say. Um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. But anyway, let's flip over to the 2000 tick chart, and we'll get through the trades uh, for today, and we'll wrap this day up. And here it is. You can see the range. And we did close just slightly above the midline on that range. So uh, somebody today asked me why I picked this high instead of uh, the overnight high for the range. Well, if you look over here, there's a big stem that comes all the way up and it made a higher high than this. So I didn't, I'm still within the overnight highs and overnight lows. So, and that's generally where you find your ranges when prices stay within the overnight highs and lows. Yeah, we, sometimes you'll break out of it and fail and come back in, but generally speaking, that's how you find the range. And, and you know, so basically this person's asking me, well, how do you know when it's to use the higher one? Well, it's just experience and doing it over and over and seeing what the prices do every day. And when you've been doing this, uh, you know, you keep doing this and practicing and studying and learning, and you'll be able to find these ranges and I mean, I can glance at the chart and see this stuff instantly now because I've been doing it so long. It's a skill, and you get better at it. And so the way you get better at it is you practice and hone it every day. The more you practice, the more you hone your skill. Just like I've been talking about consistently lately is uh, simulate, sim trading and taking every trade you see every day, all day long, every day, as much as you can, and studying those trades. That's how you get better. But anyway, I'm not going to get off on that tangent today. Let's... Uh, Zoom in here, take a look at the chart, and uh, go through these trades. And like I said, you had there was you had to be patient this morning. Um, but uh, seven o'clock came as we're coming up through here, and there's just no entries. There was really none short until here. You get a new low, and you get a first entry, second entry. I like this one because it's off the key entry point. It does look a little congested there. Uh, and another trader asked me about this trade, and I told him I liked it. But you do have to consider that congestion. Um, it's something you ought to take into consideration. Uh, definitely, when this came back, you could say, "Hey, there's a failure here." But uh, I wouldn't call it. I wouldn't take that because now it's definitely uh, sure it shoots straight down, straight on down. But it could have bounced there and gone higher. We do have a little overshoot of this green channel, however. Prices still could have gone back and tested that high. So you got to be careful in that stuff right there. So just keep an eye on it. Um, again, I like this one just because uh, look how many times we've turned down off that key entry point. But when it didn't turn down off of it that time on the second entry and came back again, of course, they probably trapped some longs, people getting long there on the second entry long because it is a failure. But there's not a lot of room to the lows here. And so I'd just be real careful with that. Uh, I don't think I would have entered on the failure. If I didn't enter on this second entry, I'm skipping that trade. There's another second entry right here, but you can see how congested and flat that is. It's kind of it's kind of in the middle of no man's land because it's not back to the key entry point. It's not back to the uh, EMA. It's not much room to the midline that we just bounced off of multiple times. So I, I think it's risky going short there. It works, but... It's not a great setup. And of course, it bounces here and we get a break. 
you get a couple of legs up. There's a second entry short, but it triggers on this inside bar, so no setup there. And I said this the other day, something very similar. I said there's a second entry short here, and I didn't mark it, and the trader couldn't figure out where there was a second entry short. Well, just because I don't mark it, um, there's notice the new low right there. When it breaks lower right there, that's a first entry. So the next time it breaks lower again, that's a second entry. So it's a second entry short when it breaks below that bar right there. Doesn't mean it's a tradable second entry. It doesn't mean I'm going to mark it, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if that trader's watching today, I, uh, you know, there's second entries all over here. It doesn't mean you take the trade, though. So um, I don't know if it just he didn't quite understand because I talked about it and it didn't mark it, or if he just really didn't understand. I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, uh, there's no entry there. Then it bounces here, first entry, and there's a second entry when it breaks above that, but again, not a very good setup. This one, if it would have broke below this bar, I'd probably tell you to take it, but it doesn't. And then you get a lower high here, and this just looks too congested. Look how many times we bounced along that midline. Uh, you just can't go short there. And even, even though it went lower, look how many times it failed trying to get through that midline before it finally did. And then we end up making... I don't think that signal bar qualifies. You could argue a triple test. And then once again, this one doesn't qualify. Uh, you're making lower lows here and lower highs still. This thing could go lower. So just no setups there. It does bounce, give you a close outside new high. Again, no setup. This bar is just way too big. Not much room left. And you see what happens. It reverses. And you just have to be patient in there. Just not any good setups. Now, this is starting to be a really strong trend. So maybe you go along right there. It's one of those strong trends. You can see it's not getting strong, starting to look strong until right in here. So maybe you go along right there. But then the problem with that one is you got a three bar matching high. I'll, I'll leave it green, but it's not a sure thing for sure. Um, we do turn down right there. I, that's the first close outside, though. You might argue that closes out, but that's not a convincing close outside this trend trend line. And actually, this trend line might be a little flatter than that. I think it's more like that right there. And so then you don't have a close. I think that's more correct right there. This thing's probably moved on me some. As, but you can see that's holding prices, and they're climbing all the way. And so there's not a close outside yet. So I think that's a little risky. And then coming down, same thing. There's no close outside. I don't think you want to go long. There is a high or low right here, but we just came off the highs. So even though we may get a retest, the odds are we could be going lower. So I'm not crazy about it. Plus, that's an inside bar on that one. But on the high or low here, you might argue for that to be green. But again, I would skip that trade. And then it comes up here. You get a second entry short here. And you might argue for that to be green on the second entry short because we do have the break and a new high and we would be looking for at least a retest of this low if we don't go all the way to the other side again. So you might argue for one, but I would wait on a lower high here. And you get that here, um, but then it looks a little congested. So you might wait all the way for the third. And this actually broke higher and failed and turned down. Now you got to for sure, triple test across there uh, without it making a higher high. So I like entering this one. I don't know that I would enter it on the engulfing bar because it might bounce off the EMA. But once it closes, if it breaks below that, it's probably going lower. Again, there's another second entry. This is more like the one I was talking about the guy asked me about. Notice the new low, and you get a first entry, and then you come up. So when it breaks below that real green bullish bar that's a second entry short but the signal bar doesn't qualify for an entry so there's no setup you can take there so there's no trade um, lower eye here but no signal bar and same thing here um, lower high lower high but they're just first entries and then you really need three bars to consider it a leg or a trend. And so I would call that a double bottom. So first entry, and then there's a second entry right there. This one you could enter on the engulfing bar. It breaks higher and turns down. Or you could wait till right here. You still got plenty of room to get out. 
but this is not as even though by the counts it'd show you a second entry there that's not really a leg up I'd, I'd just count that as a new low it's a double bottom and then the first entry second entry if you took this one it would have worked but you got to be careful with those because you'll get burned on them sometimes watch for this just because the the indicator might give you a count or technically by the counts if there's a second entry there it doesn't really look like two legs back so here you get a first entry second entry but the signal bar is no good first entry there's another second entry there but we're just going sideways this one is really tempting and you might even argue that we tried to go higher there there and there and if you did then you got a triple test but the signal bar is just not great it does confirm that trend line um, you can argue that's a, a second entry short too you know if you see all of that maybe you can mark that green but if you don't see all that that's definitely a no tr no trade right there and that's just the first entry and then we get a break here uh, this might have just been the retest of the low, but, that, but when it starts getting that many swings, it keeps going. I always draw another trend challenge because it's just a little flatter, but we don't get a retest here. Um, never did. But anyway, you get a spike in channel here. Notice how it spikes up and goes into this channel. And these are just first entry, so nothing there. Um, I do like uh, the two bar matching high, big bearish bar after we got a break and a couple of moves up uh, I like going short there just to write try to as long as you got room back to the EMA just try to ride it back and then we end up trending lower there's a lower high there but you don't want to trade that uh, then we get a break and you get a first entry second entry good signal bar I like going short there and then here you end up bouncing so you could argue there's a triple test I'm not crazy about it we do have the break and a new low, and you could argue there's a triple test, but we're making lower lows, and the bars are making lower highs. I marked it green, but I'm not crazy about it. I think you should wait on that one. And, of course, it runs up all the way to the top, makes a double top. You get a break, runs up, tests it again. It's not a good enough signal bar to go short, though, but then you get another test and a nice signal bar. So there's the one to go short. There's a lower high there. Uh, I didn't mark it, but you could argue for that to be green. You got to wait for this to close. You can't trade that on an engulfing bar. But then it comes back again and tries to go higher again and fails. So again, and you're looking for a new low here. I just bumped my microphone. I hope it wasn't too loud or broke your eardrums or anything. If it did, I apologize. But you could argue there's a failure there. It's on the wrong side of the EMA, and you, you don't you're not necessarily looking for that here. But um, yeah, you might go short there. I marked it green. It's just another shot at a lower eye, really. And then we bounce down here. Um, I didn't like this one. It's, it's, it's you're not getting rejection there. It ends up taking off. There is a higher low right here that maybe you take. But it closes below the EMA, and I'm just not crazy about it because we didn't look like we got rejection here to begin with. It does come back and gives you a decent signal bar, but there's a little gap right there. Notice how there's no overlap, that it closes on its low, then opens on its high and keeps going. Well, sometimes the market will back up just to fill that gap and go lower. So you can't be sure that's not what's happening there. Uh, it would have worked, but I, I think you got to wait. And we're just chopping along and then we test this again so now you got a clear triple test across here with a nice signal bar that's where you go long and you can see it shoots right on up actually breaks out the other side now and that takes you into 230. so there's a few trades in here you had to be patient it didn't really start there was one early trade and then there wasn't much going on till almost 10 o'clock and then from 10 on there there's a few trades there you ought to have been able to find you a good two or three trades out of that. Um, anyway, there it is today, another range day. We talked about it on the daily chart. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. The market has opened back up. It's 
you know, it's five oh three. I mean, that doesn't mean anything right there. This thing, whatever it does in the next 30 minutes means literally nothing because it could change considerably. I mean, like here, look how it opened and went higher and it ends up selling way off. And that means nothing really in the big scheme because we end up going higher and lower and it's a big range day. So um, I don't put much stock into the overnight stuff, but we use it to help us with our price action and to find our ranges and things like that. But don't try to trade this stuff. You can, you can safely start trading around 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Figure that out based on what your time front, your time zone is. Sometimes six six thirty, you might could take a trade, but I, I I usually don't. My rule is I don't start before seven. So, and there's a lot of times that's seven to eight thirty that window before the market the the regular session opens can be some good trading a lot of times. Usually the mornings are better, but lately we've had a few days where we just didn't have much going on in the morning and. And then we have a decent afternoon, so that's just the market for you. It switches gears, and it, by the time you get comfortable with something, it'll switch on you and throw you off, and you'll think you, and then you'll, so never go to sleep on the market, because it will surprise you, no matter what you do, or how good you are at reading the chart. It will surprise you. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. I'm done for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.